Welcome to the Gfinity Arena from London. We're live for the Play Like a Legend season finals. This is the grand final. This is it. It all comes down to now. It doesn't get much more important than this. We have taken 16 of the best FIFA Ultimate Team players in the world. We've chopped them down to the final eight. Boys, this is the business end of things. Spencer, Dave, thanks very much for joining me. I'm excited. I'm hyped. I'm so excited. My hair fell out. It's probably going to grow back again and fall out again. What can we expect from today? First of all, uh, sorry, first of all, great fashion choices. I think so. Great minds. Congratulations on that. Unlucky Dave, though. didn't uh, get the memo. <laughs> um, no, today is the big one, isn't it? It yeah. is the grand final. You know, we've had a lot of really entertaining tournaments throughout the summer and, and then spring, but now it's where it all it all matters. If you win today, you get the big prizes. Absolutely. Let's take a quick, very, very quick look at the uh, the schedule. We'll break it down for you. Very, very simple. They're going to be quarterfinals, semifinals, and obviously the grand final. And uh, thr throughout the course of the day, we'll be seeing who will be taking away some pretty spectacular and very sexy prizes indeed. Let's take a very quick look at those for you. Here they come. So as you can see, first place will walk away with $7,000. Second place, $3,500. Third and fourth place will take home $1,750 each. Plus the goal of the season bonus for last season will get $500. You'll be able to vote on that today. That's The details on that are coming up very, very shortly. So what happened yesterday? We had quite a lot uh, of controversy. We had some great games with loads of goals. Let's take a little look at the groups and see how everything panned out. 99% of everything went according to uh, according to plan. We had two major shocks, though. Dave, the curse, uh, picked Aga Rosenmeyer, and unfortunately, he is on his way back to Denmark. And Ty Walton crashed out in spectacular fashion. Unfortunately, uh, he had two uh, two silver goal games, just couldn't make it happen. But normally, like 99% of what uh, we expected to happen actually happened. And this is the bracket today. These these are the quarterfinals. Huge Gorilla versus Tass. Epsilon Rocky versus Dr. Rahano. who surprised everybody yesterday. He looks like he's a absolute class act. Uh, Vitality, Brian and Marla, and then Graham FPS versus Emmy Boost. So we thought yesterday that we wouldn't get that dream final of Spencer and uh, and Vitality. Brian, it looks like that could be the case, though. Chaps, look at those games. It's stacked. We have got goals everywhere. What do you think is going to happen? Well, I mean, yeah, goals are definitely going to be <laughs> under order of play. Well, as long as Spencer's involved, there's going to be goals. Exactly. You know, he, and there's a few other guys in there as well. Dr. Hano's scoring quite a few yesterday. Um, I think, yeah, I think I'm expecting a few twists today because now we've got a really, I mean, everyone was good in this yeah. tournament. Now it's next level good, yeah. you know. Um, group A and B went very much as we expected. Group C and D did have the shocks. And I think now as different play styles come up against each other, particularly that huge gorilla versus task game, it's a really interesting kind yeah. of uh, mix up of styles. We're going to start to see some shocks. You know, someone's going to go out. Someone's prediction are going to be going in the next round or two. Yeah. The question is who's who will get it right? It won't be Dave, obviously, because <laughs> he's already gone. Dave, you were saying bef you were saying before we went live though, you think that you know the quarterfinals you think you, you might be out of peg who's yeah. gonna get through, but once this gets to the semi finals, you can't you know, you can't pick a winner. No, the, the level that we got at this tournament is just so tight. It's it, you know, it, it just shows that we've had three different winners and no one's been able to retain the title yet. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, what all the three previous winners like didn't even get to the final. Really? Yeah. And as a um, so as a pro player yourself, you've been you know you've been sort of many times in this sort of situation where you get to the last stages of a tournament. Yeah. It starts to matter. Naturally, the pressure arrives. How do you how do you keep yourself calm? How do you keep yourself focused, but at the same time sort of still enjoy what's going on? Uh, in such competitive games, it's actually hard to enjoy it because uh, you're so focused. And if one little thing goes against you, your head just kind of goes a little bit. It's just important to keep telling yourself, you know, um, it's just a game. I know, um, obviously, there's a lot of money involved and people say it a lot, but if you just keep selling yourself it's just a game, the pressure will just naturally kind of drift out of your mind and yeah. it'll allow you to just play your, play your style. And if you lose after that and you know you've given it 100%, then you know, there's nothing else you can say about it. Fair enough. All right, so let's let's talk predictions. We've got a little bit of time here, so let's talk predictions. Spence, uh, you had uh, Spencer, huge gorilla, from moment one. Um, Stay with that. Got to stay with it. Got to stay with my prediction. You know, it, like, I think Dave's right. It could go either way. Such is the quality of the guys playing. Yeah. But I'll stay true to my prediction. Who's Gorilla? You know, yeah. I, think, I think he's definitely got it in his locker to win. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. And Dave, who are you gonna are you gonna put the mockers on? Um, I'm gonna. I I'll mean, I mean, encourage. <laughs> 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 Yesterday, uh, like after August Rosemary went out, um, I picked Doctor Ahana. I'm gonna stick with him, but. It's going to be a hard one, to be honest, because I think Marlott could be a surprise factor. He's definitely an underdog in there. Yeah, we, we were really impressed with Marlott yesterday. What, what is it about the way that he plays that you like? 
I, I, he just he reminds me of August a little bit. He's just got such a complete play style. He's always pretty calm in there. And um, the fact that Spencer was saying that yesterday, he's one of the very few people, if only, like to, uh, someone who's actually got a better record against him than he... Um, so he's got more wins against Spencer than he has losses, which there's not many people on FIFA 15 that's that good that they can have a record like that. So the fact that someone can beat Spencer like, so consistently and Spencer's like, considered probably the best on this game, it just goes to show like, though. He's definitely got the talent, it's just whether he can uh, do it this weekend. Well, when Spencer beat him yesterday, we did, we did the post-match interview, he came sort of, through the, sort of through the back door into the press room and he was like, <sighs> he was so relieved that he kind of got past him. So that probably shows you the, the level that... that that he's probably at. And yeah. Spence, if you if you were to pick an outside bet, who would that be? Well, I think it's interesting that Dave's just picked out two German guys because, you know, in the first three seasons, we've seen that the English and the French dominate. Yeah. But this could be their time. You yeah. know, we've got two guys in the knockout round. They're not going to meet each other, so they're not going to knock each other out straight away. Yeah. So, yeah, that's something to look at. I think the Dr. Hano and Marla are definitely good shouts. But I think, for me, I, I, I'd like to think it's going to be between um, two former winners. Huge Gorilla yeah. or Spencer and uh, Vitality Brian. Okay. I think one of those two. Good stuff. Well, whatever happens, we're, we're definitely in for a treat. Speaking of treats, our friends, of, uh, our friends over at Green Man Gaming have got a lovely offer for you on FIFA 16. <laughs> that is the way that we do this. We just massage the graphics until they appear. Just missed uh, it. it. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, uh, if you want to uh, order, pre-order sorry, FIFA 16 with a 25% discount, you've got until tomorrow, oh, sorry, until tonight, midnight tonight, in order to take advantage of that amazing offer. So don't hang around. Go over to the Green Man Gaming uh, website. Use that code uh, that's at the bottom of your screen and uh, and take advantage of that amazing offer. Thanks to the Green Man Gaming guys for uh, for chucking that up for us. That's amazing. Uh, social media, you should be following us by now. If not, have a word with yourselves. If you're also not, make sure you're doing it. All the details are on the bottom of the screen there. So Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all, all the others. Now, yesterday, you might have heard some very strange music. I think it goes something like this. Something like that. Can you hear that? do have to dance like that. <laughs> so basically what that is, is we've chucked up a little pub quiz. We've put together some questions that are inserted into the breaks. There's seven more to get through. So just a little bit of fun. Just have some fun at home with them um, and uh, and see how many you get right. You're, you're like 100% on that. What can I say? You just know everything there is to know about football. <laughs> I don't know about that. We'll see how I get on today, of course. But uh, yeah. great questions put together. Really good questions. Yeah, it's true, true, yeah. Me and, uh, me and Dr. Google. <laughs> Thanks. I thought you were going to say that. Dr. Ohano then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's good at everything, but he's not yeah. good. At, it's my quiz. He can't have everything. He's got a nice big hat. Hopefully, we'll show you that feature yeah. uh, <laughs> later on. He's got a cracking cap for you. Um, um, talking of goal of the season, you will be able to vote for uh, your favourite out of what will be three uh, potential candidates for goal of the season using the hashtag on Twitter, uh, hashtag uh, fuckchamps, F-U-T champs. So hashtag F-U-T champs. And we will take a very quick look at the three contenders now so we can uh, we can have a little look at these and tell us what you think boys this is a uh, huge gorilla with robin yeah i remember this guy i think this was in the final actually of season one great goal he goes around about three players and a lovely left-footed finish yeah a fantastic goal. Now this is also in the final of season two that is absolutely Leroy superb Fur. i just love that it's the Leroy Fur as well you know <laughs> <It's> like, <even laughs> the a lot of people yeah. wouldn't put him in their team and he does that with him and then another goal here, lovely oh. volley from Ebra. Was that in the final as well? Mate. That was definitely Vitality Brian. They were all scored by winners, I no, think. That, that was it. All, all no, oh, that was, that was, was, that that was Emmy against Brian, Oh, I that think. was Emmy, because yeah. he, he was went and got Ibrahimovic as a result of seeing Brian use him well right. in season two. Yeah, I remember okay. that. Okay, so yeah, that goals. was... So, uh, Huge Gorilla, Vitality Brian and Emmy Boost. Uh, I, what's your favourite? I think for me, I'm going to have to say, I know that a lot of people will say the Robin goal involves more skill, yeah. but I just love a long range. So yeah. I'm going to say Leroy Fur. Yeah. Dave? Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with that. It's just the fact it was in the final. Like I'm pretty sure a huge gorilla is it was against the Greek, which is, I think it was a quarter final. Um, but Lee okay. referred to do that in the final. And it, it was just so un uncharacteristic from Brian. He's always such a patient player. I don't think we've seen him have a long range shot yet this tournament. He's just not that type of player. Do you think his, th his thumb slipped? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, He's absolutely scored a worldie, but yeah. completely by accident. Of course not, Brian. You're, you're top draw, for sure. My favourite is the volley. I'm an absolute... Yeah, they're all good. I, I love a little volley, me. Um, but the thing is, the, the good thing and the good reason that I'm not participating, one, I'm not any good at it, but two, I'd spend all the time celebrating. I'd be running around the booth, I'd take my shirt off, well, with, like windmill, round head. Uh, but we haven't seen any of that. I want to see some but more you, celebrations. you'd come back and they'd be 2-1 up by the time that you got back. <laughs> it's true, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah I'd get so absolutely smashed every yeah. tournament, but I'd... I'd I would honestly be beating everybody when it comes to celebrations. 
Um, we want to see your celebrations as well. So do tweet um, Gfinity um, or stick a little photo on Facebook or whatever and tag us in it of you uh, celebrating your goal the best way you the best way you see possible, and we'll find a prize to give you. I don't know. We might send Spencer around your house, like to cook you breakfast or something. Probably not. <laughs> we won't do that. They don't we won't want do me kicking them breakfast. They we, get food poisoning. We won't. We won't do that. We'll send Dave. Right. Um, okay. <laughs> Let's waste no more time. It is uh, an amazing game. We talked about it yesterday. If there's one person who can stop huge gorilla, it's probably Tass. Let's have a little look at these two's head. To head graphics. Uh, talk us through this, Ooh. boys. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of these stats. You know, I think stats can really help you interpret the games coming up and stuff like that. I know this is just from their online division play. Um, you know, possession is both dominant. Uh, Tass, a little bit more, 59%. He's a possession play. Don't expect to see that as much from Spencer. I'm actually amazed. I'm actually amazed that Tass's goal ratio is stronger than Spencer because that's not something yeah. you expect to see. Well, you got to look at the. Uh the, their rankings, Tass is, uh, what is it, 16,243rd, which means he's obviously not played many games. He's yeah. probably played about like 20 games, absolutely yeah. smashed division, nine and eight and whatever. And uh, whereas, you know, huge gorilla's third, so he's absolutely destroyed division one and got those stats in there. So It's, it's interesting that their pass completion and win percentage are identical as well. Yeah. And if you're watching at home, I guess it shows you something to aspire to. You know, if you want to see what level you need to get to, you know, particularly in division one, of course, to emulate the level these guys are playing at, you need to be looking at a 92% win ratio. You need to be looking at, you know, close to 80% pass completion. And you obviously got to be boss in possession as a minimum. So it's good. But yeah, I think you're right about the goal ratio. Like if, you, if you're new to the tournament, that's a little bit misleading in many ways because Tass isn't someone that goes out and scores a lot of goals, in my opinion. He I was going to say that but Spencer is. Spencer's yeah. a goal scorer. He scored 12 goals in his first game yesterday in the group. <laughs> uh, sorry, his first two games. Six <laughs> goals in each game. Uh, 12 goals, amazing. He did concede six yeah. as well. Yeah. So he doesn't. he's not super tight at the back. Tass, on the other hand, is, of course... Um, a little bit of a different player, slightly slightly more tentative in his approach, slightly more reactionary. If he goes one down, he's got to step up. If he goes one up, he tends to kind of just take the pace yeah. out of the game a little bit and control it. Yeah, that's... Uh, I mean, you, we, I speak to Spencer about, um, like, who he likes to play and who he doesn't. And he's playing people like Tassi absolutely hates it just because he doesn't like not being in control of the game. He can deal with it. Obviously, he's active in the past, but it's just whether Tass can, you know, take it to that next level and just frustrate him that little bit too much. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And don't forget, this is single elimination. So it's one chance. You know, you don't get the chance to come back and play somebody if you do lose this game. Once you lose uh, in, at this uh, this sort of stage, you are gone. You're done and dusted. But there's a bit more information about Spencer for you. Let's, let's not forget this guy's 18 years oh old. I know. It's amazing, yeah. isn't it? He, amazing. His, his first ever tournament was this year at Gfinity event. Yeah. Then in the first uh, Play Like a Legend season one, it was his first Ultimate Team event. It was everyone's first Ultimate Team event, but it's literally one of his first events. Yeah. A lot of these guys come from a background head-to-head. -head. He's new. He's yeah. a new kid on the block, and he's taking names right yeah. now. He is. He's, he's, take, he's taking everybody's names. He's an absolute monster. Look at him focused, really, really focused, concentrating. He knows that this is, you know, knockout stages. You have to be, you know, sharp straight away, and he, he, he won't be leaving sort of anything to sort of anything behind. I think is is what I'm trying to say. I wonder how I wonder how Tass is getting on. How's Tass feeling? Probably quite relaxed. He was quite he's quite relaxed yesterday, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we saw him sort of slouching in the chairs, you know, taking it easy. I wonder if his posture's slightly different today. Um, we're going to see a bit of information about Tass, so you can make sure you're following all these boys on Twitter and you, you find out about these guys. Give them your support. Get in the Twitch chat. Tell everybody you're watching. Tell us where you're from. Um, tell Spencer how nice he looks. A lot of you did that yesterday. They were doing that, they? They got They're upset, nice they like got that. upset when you took a break, nice. didn't they? I know, I know, you know. you got to give other people a, t a chance to, to do the job as well, you know? <laughs> Chris uh, Trout likes to talk as well. He yeah. does, yeah, he does. And we have to, it's, it's one of those sort of community things. You kind of have to let, you have to let Chris and have a go and stuff. It's, it's part of like the quota. a special day. Yeah, we've got yeah. a special day for special yeah. people. Yeah, it's like a box ticket exercise. You've got to do one. <laughs> so there's a bit more information about, uh, about Tass. Again, young, 21. Um, it's a, it always amazes me, though. You see how young these guys are. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's funny because, yes, he's young, he's 21. But in the, those three years he has on, on Spencer are huge in yeah. the sense of that's three years of competitive play. There's three different iterations of FIFA yeah. that he's played. Um, you know, he's, he's, if anything, he's more like a veteran of, of FIFA, yeah. isn't yeah. he? Ooh. I was going to say, on FIFA, that's actually a little bit old. No? Like the, the younger generation pension, seems to be so. coming through, yeah. <laughs> No, but he, yeah, so 21 is, is young in, in real life, but in FIFA terms, 
you could still come into it. Like, don't get me wrong, you could be watching this, you could be 25, 35, 45 and want to yeah. have a go at it. There's no reason you can't. Yeah. One of the great things about uh, FIFA and esports in general is that new games come out, and so you've got a new chance to master it. You know, yeah. we've seen Spencer, Huge Gorilla, do really well on FIFA 15. 16 might not be his game. It might suit a different approach. It might suit you your, your approach watching at home. So, But in terms of Tass, the reason I say 21 is a vet is not because of his age, it's because he's been on the scene for a yeah, number yeah, of years. Of he started young, just like Spencer. When Spencer's 21, He's going to be one of the main names out there, if not already. Well, we're just getting the uh, we're just getting the players into the game. We should be ready to go. So this is it. We are about to kick off the the final stages of the Play Like a Legend series, uh, presented by Xbox One. I'm going to hand over to Spencer and Dave, who will talk you through the action. I can't wait. Let's sit back and enjoy it. Get the kettle on. You don't want to miss a second of this. Chaps, take it away. Here we go, guys. This is the big. This is big score, basically, yeah. isn't it? Right? This all, bit, all these events have been huge, okay? We've seen people win. We've seen people lose. We've seen people crash out. We've seen people smash people, right? But now, this is where you want to make a name for yourself. This is where you want to say, I am the first ever grand final Play Like a Legend champion. We're going to find out who that person is today. Dave, are you as excited as I am? I am, especially for this game. Like This is a game we've been kind of wanting to come up for quite a while. We've, I think I've mentioned it a few times in past tournaments that uh, Tars is just one of those players that a huge gorilla hates to play and uh, up until now, he hasn't had to play him. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of a little a grudge match that I've been waiting for. So yeah, I'm yeah, really uh, interested to see how he plays out. Definitely, I completely agree. And I think from this point onwards, we've kind of got a load of little, you know, in, in, in tournaments in real life, you'll see when two teams meet each other in a quarter final, you'll be like, this is the real final or what have yeah. you. We've got loads of little final, finals peppered out in terms of big matches that we've been wanting to see for a long time. So every game is huge. You know, the quarter final especially is the last game you need to win in order to guarantee yourself some prize money. So if you go out the quarterfinal stage, you don't take anything home with you apart from a bit of experience, okay? Yeah. But if you if you get through to the semi, you've got something, whatever happens, you know, as, as a minimum, you've got a little bit of, of prize money and lo lots of other things as well. So this is a really important game for, for both the guys. See on the left of your screen there, huge gorilla. On the right of your screen, uh, Dignitas or Tass. And um, I actually can't pick it. On goals and on form, you know, you could be misled by goals and you yeah. can say, oh, huge gorilla smashes everyone he comes up against, he's going to win, which I think is definitely a fair point. But... Tass has got a style, like you say, that is really suited to Huge Gorilla. I talked to him about it yesterday. He wasn't yeah. happy about the draw, Huge Gorilla. Uh, it's, it's, like you say, it's his nightmare opponent. If Tass can get one up, yeah. that's the key. Yeah, if he goes one up, he can control the game. But if Spencer gets one up, we could see uh, you know, a bit of a goal fest. Yeah, the thing is, um, the, the, when you play like Tass, getting the first goal is so important because if you don't get the first goal your possession is pretty much useless because Tass isn't a player that creates a lot of chances a game. It's rare you'll see him absolutely hammer people. When he w like Every time he wins in this tournament, it's usually by one goal, two goal, I think at, at the absolute maximum three. Uh, but if he's to go one nil down here, it's going to force him to start like playing a little bit more aggressively in attack. And when he starts doing that, that's when he starts to see huge gorilla and he'll just get absolutely ripped apart. You see Tass's team there, we saw it in the preview. It's an absolutely Joseph Technicolor dream coat of colours there. He's got some legends, he's got some pink Futties cards, he's got gold cards. He's got loads of different players in yeah. there. The three legends are the standout names. Yeah. If you're not familiar with the rules, the most amount of legends you're allowed in your team is three. So he's not just he's not just chosen three, that's the max. He's gone, you know, he's he absolutely filled out his squad as strong as he can. He's always had one of the stronger squads, Tass. Yeah. But in previous tournaments, he's failed to live up to that kind of expectation. Yeah. But is this his uh, is this his day? Are we going to see Tass pull off a shocker here and knock out our season one champion? Uh, it's possible. Like I said the first goals are so important. It's going to show us how the game's going to go. And both of these teams, it's not just the players and their abilities. Their squads have got such strong squads like Legends all over the place. Uh, I think Tass has got the 90 um, Gareth Bale footy card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, He's got the Daniel Sturridge. I'm pretty sure he had Daniel Sturridge playing in centre mid, which is a bit yeah. strange. It's an interesting choice. End of a footy item. Don't forget as well, these games are going to be played out over two legs. That's a great ball in. That was almost uh, Daly Blind for uh, Robin Van Persen in the World Cup, like there. Um, yeah, these games are going to be played out over two legs, as were yesterday's games. So 180 minutes of football to find a victor. It's uh, Tass and his legends against. Uh, well, against Spencer and his Ronaldo, I guess, because that's who he's so useful with, isn't yeah. it? Well, I remember when he lost uh, when he lost the tie in that one tournament. He was just all he was complaining about is I can't believe how bad my Ronaldo was. Yeah. <laughs> it's Ronaldo. He's not bad. He had a bad day. Yeah. His bail on the ball for Tass. If you're wondering who's who, Tass is in the red uh, kit. 
the England kit, I think. Yeah, and um, and huge gorillas in the purple kit. This is a massive home. I'm actually, my heart's racing right now. I'm really excited for this. Let us know in the Twitch chat who you're supporting as well. Are you team Huge Gorilla or are you Tass all the way? Let us know who you who you're backing. Tass could pull off an upset. If Tass knocks Spencer out here, not only would it be great for him, and I think it'll be his first semi-final in Pelic Legend history, it will also send a message out to everyone else. Things are happening. Shocks are coming. Don't let your game be one of them if you're a favourite. We've got a lot of favourites. We've got a lot of uh, close you know, contenders as well coming up. So I can't pick it. It's going to be great. Let's just hope we have a good game. You know, I always say this, and I'm sure Commentator's Curse will come back to get me eventually, but with Spencer, you always expect goals. Yeah, they'll definitely be goals. Well, I don't know, actually. I was about to say they'll definitely be goals, but the way, with the way Tass plays, if there's one person I can shut him out, it's definitely Tass. The thing is, the way... Uh, Tass's style isn't really suited to FIFA 15. Um, his style is definitely a FIFA 14 uh, style of gameplay, and he hasn't really changed it enough to dominate on this game like he did on FIFA 14. He, he has that really slow build-up play, and he always used to work the wings. He's going to get away here. Chance here. Daniel Sturridge. Oh. oh, he's gone with an interesting choice there to pass it to Ronaldo. Holds up the ball well. Is he going to deliver it? He's got a bit of room for himself here. He's gone for the finish shot. Oh, that was close. Lots of support coming in for Huge Gorilla in the chat. We've got SBFTWA saying Gorilla. We've got Swag8 fam saying Gorilla. We've got Snowball00, Gorilla. Zazaspoin, Gorilla, lots of Gorilla. A few TAS supporters as well, like Ghostface Daz1 is uh, very much in uh, Camp TAS, as is uh, T Tom BB. So it's a little bit of support for both. I think, um, I think either way, the first goal oh. is key. Whoever scores it, it could end up being the winner. That's what I'm going to put out oh, there. It's oh, it's a penalty. penalty. That's there ridiculous. Well, this could be it. If what I just said is true, and Huge Gorilla puts this goal away, he, he could win the game because he's very good at mounting on leads and building on them. That is never a penalty. Right there, let's just do that again. Ronaldo goes through, he rolls the uh, ball. If anything, uh, Blanc falls over before yeah. he comes into contact with Ronaldo. That is a harsh choice, I think. Yeah, Gorilla's got away with one there. He seems to get away with a lot on this game. I think we've got the same ref that keeps sending off all West Ham players. <laughs> Here we go. Ronaldo. He's going to score. Oh, it's a save. That is huge. Huge Gorilla cannot afford to miss penalties. We saw a lot of missed penalties yesterday. I just made the point of saying how important that first goal is. And Huge Gorilla's missed oh, it. He's just the in the bar as well. Oh, Tass is surviving an onslaught here. He needs to just calm things down and get the ball back. Because I think this first goal is key. There it is. You know what? You've got to applaud Huge Gorilla there. Because he's missed the penalty. He's going to be annoyed. He puts the ball back in, hits the header. Goes off the bar. That's going to frustrate him even further. But he doesn't give up. He keeps his resolve. And he goes and scores in the end. How, how strong is that a mentality does it take to do that there, Dave? I think he's, he's, he's obviously going to, take a, he's going to take a massive boost from that. Uh, to, to miss a penalty and be so composed uh, on the ball straight away after that he, he just like a strong mentality but no, it could be two it could be two this is what i'm talking yeah. about a huge gorilla when he gets the lead he doesn't give up well tash is tash is for, going to be frustrated and i don't think he's quite got out of the fact that he's conceded a penalty for nothing and oh my god he's in the bar again he didn't really uh he didn't really have time to set himself after that penalty you know it's obviously got to him a little bit too much let's just hope you know he can now he's got the ball he can compose it a little bit Taz can quite simply not afford to concede a second one because I don't think he's the kind of player to mount on a massive comeback. It's just not his style. He could be conceding a second one with a great ball here. Needs to defend it. Oh, my word. Laurent Blanc. That's an interesting choice. Oh, Taz is all over the shop right now. He's at sixes and sevens. Well, that's, what, that's what I was on a bit. If Spencer got the first goal in this game, he'd forced Taz into playing into a style that he isn't really comfortable with. And when that happened, Spencer would just absolutely rip him apart. And that's exactly what's happening. Playing a lot of crosses, and uh, you know, he's hit the bar from two headers from crosses. So it's working for him, really. What are you guys thinking in the chat about that first development then? Goal number one going to Huge Gorilla. Is he going to go forward and uh, take this game now, or is Tass going to get back in it? Uh, Cola Noisa saying that Tass is flustered right now. I think you're right. I think he's just about getting a little bit of composure now, though, trying to. Trying to get a foothold in this game, but he needs to keep possession a little bit better than that. Ronaldo on the ball for Huge Gorilla. Lovely skill. He's got so many red shirts around him that surely he's not going to find a way through them. Oh, almost did. 
This is a big game. This could easily have been a final in another time, yeah. another place. Bremer to his legend counterpart, Laurent Blanc, to another legend, Patrick Vieira. Bale, Bremer, down the line to Bale. Bale's going to look to get the cross in for Tass. He does, but it's not a good enough delivery. Oh, he could be have a second chance for Vieira there, but it's saved by Courtois. He's a very popular choice in goal for a lot of the players here at the uh, Play Like a Legend Grand Final. Great knockdown from Ronaldo. He's going to get it back himself. He'll take his time on the ball. Into Gareth Bale. Is he going to deliver? No. So, still 1-0, almost half-time in this first leg of the quarter-final, the first quarter-final. It's a chance! Oh, he loves those crosses. Here's Griezmann for Huge Gorilla. Don't forget, we're probably going to see some substitutions at half-time, yeah. maybe from both sides. Um, it'll be interesting to see who they bring on. I know that yesterday, Huge Gorilla was choosing to have a lot of uh, bronze players on the bench, which actually limited his options. Tend to just have three options it's used every time. His team's so strong, and I can't think of too many people who I'd... Uh who I'd replace him at, so maybe he doesn't need any. I guess the worst case scenario would be that if he didn't have any defensive cover and he was to get a red card, yeah. but he could always move a, a CDM in there or something and that wouldn't be too bad for him, I don't think. His bail on the ball for Tass is a great tackle from Walker and the half-time whistle is going to be upon us very shortly, I'm sure. There it there is. is. Okay, so 1-0 to Huge Gorilla. First blood goes to Spencer. And he's had five shots there, all on target. Uh, interesting, it's, it's, it's decided to classify those woodwork shots as on target. I think legally they're not actually seen as on target if you hit the bar or the post. No. But, um, but Tass has only had the, the one shot and it was off target. So that's a problem for him. Yeah, Tass is just going to be completely up against it now for the rest of the game. He's The way he plays, he really he just doesn't create enough chances. And uh, I, I can't see him creating like, two chances of eight, like Spencer creating more. So maybe he can get a goal back, but I can't see him getting a goal without it conceding beforehand. Shout out to everyone watching on Twitch. Uh, Oliver W. Fletcher, how are you? SBFTW8, what's going on? Welcome to the grand final. This is the quarter final. It's confusing when you say the grand final. Yeah. This isn't the final. This The whole event is the grand finals, I guess. Yeah. But the actual final will be coming later today. This is a quarter final. It's a chance here for Spencer to go 2-0 up. He's hit the woodwork for the third time in 47 minutes. I wish like th those near post shots are just too overpowered for me. Like that's Courtois there and he didn't even make an attempt to save it. He just kind of fell over. It's just the same same sort of thing happened when he scored. He shot at the near post and the keeper instead of trying to save it just kind of fell over. I think uh Huge Gorilla was checking his players' ratings there. Or maybe Tassi's players rating, seeing how they're performing. I'm not sure. Uh, if he's checking what formation Tassi's playing. Oh, okay. Seeing the formation. Okay. Yeah, you, can, you can only check your opponent's formation by see, yeah, going into the player's ratings. So he's doing. The, he's got a 4 4 2 currently. It looks like he's changing that because we've got both screens at our disposal here. And I can confirm to you that I think, um, think Tassi just changed to 4 2 3 1. Yeah, the wide. I, yeah. Think, I think that's what he's. Well, I can't remember whether that's what he started with and he went for two strikers or not. But he, uh, yeah, yeah. He's playing a 4 2 3 1 wide formation. We've seen Tass bring on David Luiz invariably in most games in a centre midfield position, yep. which he seems to like. And it obviously worked well for him in the group, managed to get out of that group, albeit in second place. That through ball just not getting through there. And uh, yeah, Tass, I think Tass is it's in his best interest to try and get a goal reasonably early because against other players, you could say just hold it here and get a late goal. But it's very unlikely you're going to stop Huge Gorilla scoring more goals. I think if he gets a goal, though, it changes everything. He can go back to his natural play style, yeah. frustrate Spencer, and then we might see Spencer struggle to score. But as long as it's 1-0, Huge Gorilla is always Ooh. the most likely to get another goal. But Tass needs to find a way of breaking through. And David Luiz, that for me is why you don't really want him in centre mid, because running with the ball there, there's other players you could have who would be a little bit more talented there. Part of me then just was waiting for the net to ball do that hopeful shot. <laughs> Yeah, it would have been amazing. Not for Tass. For us, amazing, yeah. A little neutral yeah, as yeah. well, yeah, definitely. Griezmann. Would, would that have came to towards goal of the season, even though it was obviously an accident? Of course it would. A goal is a goal, Dave. You should know that more than anyone. No, I do, but if it's an accident... Uh, Doesn't mean necessarily would win the competition. No, it, it's like that's that, that goal in real life where someone like, just puts a slide tackle in the halfway line and ends up getting yeah. straight over the it's keeper. It's still epic, though. Yeah, it's but is, epic. It, is it better than Beckham's? It's rarer. Yeah, it's rarer, but I wouldn't necessarily say it was better. 
They've both Pass got on the ball here. They've both got Lauren Blanc at centre back as well. Yeah, what he's, an he's absolute a very popular, rock. popular legend. <laughs> yeah. He? Ex, uh, ex Man United player, of course, manager of PSG nowadays. Carl Walker on the ball. There's the Griezmann. Walker. David Luiz. Nice triangles. Tass is great at those sort of passes. He just, I said this yesterday on the stream. He doesn't create enough chances for me. He doesn't, um, he doesn't, he doesn't put the other person's goalkeeper under enough pressure. No, you're right. He just, he, uh, he builds up too slow. I mean, that's what separates him from Brian. Brian plays like this in a sense. He keeps a lot of the possession, but Brian creates so many chances whilst he's doing it. Yeah. Whereas Tash is maybe a little bit more patient and too patient at times and misses the opportunity. So as things stand, uh, Spence will be really happy with how this game's gone so far. 1-0 lead against Tass. I think if he wins this game, he'll further uh, secure his position as one of the number one favourites to win. It's a good ball in. It's got no, a not again. He's, he's got to be the luckiest player on FIFA 15. I can't believe this. Surely Huge Gorilla's not going to miss this penalty as well. Tass has got to be a little bit frustrated that he's given away another penalty there. <laughs> Penaldo, they call him. He's the expert at winning them, but can he finish them? He's missed the last one. If Huge Gorilla misses another penalty here, he will be absolutely fuming, but I don't think he will. I'll back him to put it away. If Tass saves it, fair play to him. He's actually going to give it to someone else. He's going to give it to Wayne Rooney over Ronaldo. Is that because he missed it with Ronaldo last time? Or did he take it with Rooney then as well? No, I think he took it with Ronaldo. Let's Rooney! See. He scored this one, 2-0. Do not underestimate the importance of that goal, ladies and gentlemen. That is a huge goal. It may even be too much for Tass to come back from already. I was saying this to him yesterday, I was like, I, to Spencer, I was like, you're a really good player, you create a lot of chances, but the goals that you score half of the time were absolutely disgusting, and that just goes to show. He he missed the, um, he's got two penalties now, which he didn't deserve, but he's, he's, missed, he's missed the sitters. Yeah, he has missed sitters, but you got the, for the, me, you've got to look at the chance creation. Yeah, look. You know, he creates just, the chances, Tass doesn't create the chances. If you don't create chances, yeah. you don't score. Look. You can expect to win a few with a couple of chances yeah. every now and then. You know, like, it's like Greece winning the, you know, Euro, Euro 2004. 2004. Yeah. It's not it's something that will happen every time. It's an anomaly. Yeah. It's an exception to the rule. You can't back a footballing strategy based on anomalies. Yeah, well, I said to him, I was like, if you... Chance, though. I was like, if you actually scored the goals that you created instead of like the lucky ones that come along, like half of your goals would be absolutely amazing, like Don't amazing you make team play. Luck, though, Dave? Well, I, I agree that in a sense, like when people score rebounds, and I'm like, oh, that's luck. In that case, I think you've created that luck. But in in that instance, there yeah. where you just put a hopeful crossing and Tass has just gone to heady late, that like I, I can't really agree with it there. Oh, but, I concur uh, to an extent, but I also would say that Tass doesn't even put those balls into the box. He's not even putting his ball in the danger zone. You know, that corridor of uncertainty, you put a hanging ball into a box, into that danger area, things can happen. They might not happen every time, but that is the, the risk that, that Spencer takes by opt... Oh, my God. Oh, my life. That is the risk that um, Spencer takes by, yeah. by opting to lose possession, essentially. That's yeah. what you're doing when you put a cross in. But I Tass, Tass favours possession so much that he doesn't play those balls and therefore yeah. doesn't get that luck. I think this comes down to a, a case of who's played the game or, like, Spencer has played the game so much, he literally knows every single... Like part of the game, you know, every little exploit. That's why when you see him going to the box, he starts doing ball rolls because he's played the game so much. He knows if he does a ball roll in the box, he's either going to get past a defender or a defender will just completely swipe him and he'll get a penalty for it. Yeah. We saw Taz. Oh my word! Can you imagine? We saw Taz put a ball in there which was similar, and that was the sort of thing that he needs to do more of a thing. Just to ask those questions of Huge Gorilla's defence. But he is still 2 0 down here, and he does need a goal sooner rather than later because. Yeah. You know, my money would be on Huge Gorilla extending his lead further. We saw him go for that chipped effort with Ronaldo a minute ago, and if that yeah. had gone in, it would have just been absolutely yeah, see, crazy. That's, that's what I mean. If he, scores, if he scores his goals like that, his goals would be absolutely incredible, but he, he misses the chances like that, and then he'll get a penalty like the one he got on score. That, Chance here for Ronaldo to make it three. Good defending by Bremer there. It's like, stop, stop scoring those goals, miss them on purpose, and then score a nice one for us. Just for a change, come on. <laughs> I know you can hear me in there, Spencer. He scored a few nice ones, to be fair to him. He scored so many, you forget. You yeah, know. yeah. 12 in his first two games. Walker. Vieira. He looks like a force to be reckoned with at the minute. He does. He definitely I mean, does. He, he, Tass, oh, they're taking each other out. Tass was the type of player I thought could have really caused him problems, but Tass hasn't really put him under any sort of pressure whatsoever. No, he conceded his goal too yeah, early for me. But the, um, Spencer's really been in control of this game. 
Where does... I know, obviously, he's, he's got... A, we'll see who ends up winning today, but as season one champion and someone who's been consistently good, how... Um, where does where does Huge Gorilla rank in the kind of pantheon of competitive FIFA players for you? On FIFA 15? In, in the history of the game, competitively. It's hard to say because every year you get that one player where the game just perfectly suits. Like, we had Vince last year and we've had people in the past. I think he... For Do me you think he's got what it takes to... Like, who are the people that stand out for you that have done it across multiple games? Ty, Bruce Granek, uh, Deep Tass, yeah. uh, August Rosemeyer, there's a few. But Interesting like, though, yeah. not one of those names you mentioned there yeah. has won a Play Like a Legend tournament. Yeah, well, that's, that's the thing. Like, this is the first game where it's changed so much, it's actually thrown a lot of people off, for example. Like Vince last year, he was easily just as dominant as what Spencer is right now. And uh, But the game, the game often just doesn't suit people Ooh. enough. Like, this game suits Spencer so perfectly, it's why he's so good at it. Spencer will really make his name in a competitive scene on FIFA 16 when he can prove to people, yeah. you know what, I'm not just like, I'm not just good on this one game. Uh, you know, I, I can implement this game style on FIFA 16, which, from what I've played on it, his style will not work. Full time there in the first leg. Spencer 2 0 up. Tass uh, looking a little bit unhappy with things, as you'd expect. You know, he, he's, got a, he's got to find two goals from somewhere, and that's with him keeping a clean sheet. In the yeah, second leg, which is unlikely. But it's interesting what we're talking about there, about the overall kind of, you know, the history of good players. And I get what you mean about FIFA uh, 15 being a drastically different game. I think as well, one thing we've got to mention is the fact that it's all my team as well. Yeah. It's not traditional, you know, head to head. It's, 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 the, it's the kind of way the future is going with, with FIFA Ultimate Team, such a popular game mode now. It's the thing that the people that made their name playing head to head over the last three, four, five years need to step up to. If you're, if you're Rosa Meyer, if you're, you know, someone like uh, Bruce Granick, if you can't make the adaptation to Ultimate Team, you risk getting left behind. Would you say that's fair? In a sense, I mean, Xbox is definitely trying to take Ultimate Team, like, forward, and it's, it's great that they're doing that. Uh, it just depends on the player. I know not a lot of players like to play Ultimate Team because it's just such a fast game, paced game. Uh, that is why Huge Gorilla is so good at it. Like, it don't get me wrong, he's very good on head-to-head -head as well, obviously, but mm. it's slower, so he struggles a little well, bit we more with it. We have seen him win the head-to-head. -head. The only yeah. tournament he's played, head-to-head, -head, he won. <laughs> no, he's played two, he lost one as well to Graham. Oh, in that, that, in that, that absolute that epic. Where that he, round of it? Yeah, oh, when, right. remember the silver goal when uh, he was 2 all down in the 40th oh, minute? Yeah. Not, yeah, you're right, you're yeah, right. You're but right. Yeah, he, um, he does struggle on head-to-head. -head. Not, as, not, as, like, not hugely, but... On Ultimate Team, it's just, you know, it's that's his game mode. Yeah, He's just yeah. incredible at it. Yeah. And as I said, on FIFA 16, it's really down to him to, you know, to just prove how good he is. And as I said, just see if he can get his start, either get his start to work, which, as I said, I don't think his start will work or adapt to it. And you know, prove me wrong, which I hope he does do, because he's obviously a really good player and he's a nice guy. And uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to think that he can go on to dominate on the next few years, but you know, it's down to him to prove that. We've learned so much about these guys over the course of these four live finals we've done here at Play Like a Legend, um, about their, their choices tactically, the players they like playing, the way they actually you know, line up tactically. It's going to be really interesting in FIFA 16 to see how they cope and how they cope with a new game, new dynamics. You know, We can show uh, Tass's team on the screen now as it's just going into the game, and that is a lovely team. We talked about it before. The three legends, team of the season, Griezmann, Ronaldo, you know, the uh, footy bail and Sturridge card. Sturridge playing centre mid. What do you think about that choice, guys? Let us know in the Twitch chat. Would you ever play Daniel Sturridge in central midfield? I think he's going to change it, to be honest, straight away. You think it's just a chemistry thing? Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Here we go, then. Second leg is about to kick off. Yeah. Currently, is he going to make that change? He's going to change his formation. This is, this is actually uh, oh, no, Spencer's team here. I think, I think yeah. no, Tass is making some changes as well. We can see on the other screen. Tass yeah. has gone to a 4-4-2. Sturridge up front with Ronaldo, so he's not using Sturridge up top. He's using Griezmann on the right-hand side, Kadira in the middle, with Vieira. Bale on the left, Vieira in central midfield. And obviously on the screen right now, we're seeing uh, Spencer's choices. He's making some very, very quick changes. Obviously, they're kind of ingrained in his uh, DNA, what he does there. Yeah. He likes to do the same stuff every time. So, we're about to start. 2-0 to Spencer, a.k.a. Huge Gorilla, in the purple strip. Tass in the yellow Arsenal away kit is chasing the game. He needs two goals minimum to take it to a silver goal. Will he get them? We'll find out. Who's really on the ball here with Kyle Walker? He gets a goal early doors here. It's pretty much game over, if not already. Off the post again! The 
this guy likes woodwork so much he might as well become a carpenter. Yeah. Griezmann on the ball. What he's so good at is his pressing, like he charges players out so much and no one's ever really able to punish him for it. Like, he, he gets oh. away with it way too much. Unbelievable scenes here. The amount is that the fourth time is it the woodwork now? Um, in two in less than, well, just over one game. Unbelievable stuff. Six minutes into the game, we've already had a little bit of drama, and that's what you get with Huge Gorilla. You get a lot of action. Bremer on the ball here for Tass Vieira. He just didn't make enough chances in that first game, did he, Dave? Sorry? Tass just didn't make enough chances. Oh, no, he, he, it's just one of his problems that he always has. He never really makes... He, he has a lot of the ball, but he... Oh! oh what a save. He doesn't attack with penetration. Mm. And that's just... Urgency is lacking. Yeah. Uh, you, you could tell, like, the way he plays, if this was FIFA 14, I think he'd be... I, I think he'd be winning. But because it's FIFA 15 and, you know, it's a different game. Every day. got to move with the yeah, times, man. You, you have to adapt. And, uh, not times, not, they are changing. Not a lot of people have adapted enough on this. Here we go. Could be all over here. Bang! Yeah, I think that is done. I think that is dusted. 3-0 now. Huge Gorilla is an unstoppable force, and unfortunately for Tass, he's not an immovable <laughs> object. I, think, hey, I don't understand how so many near post shots just keep going in. I mean, he's, he's perfected it. He's perfected it through a lot of playing. We saw he's the third-ranked ultimate team player in the world. Yeah, but that one was Sami Khedira. <laughs> Sami is a good player, mate. I don't know that for a second, but I'm not too sure about his finishing abilities. Hey, did he ever score a goal for Real Madrid? Oh, yeah, for sure. Plenty of goals. Plenty of goals. <laughs> A lot of people in the chat are saying, good game, that is game, it's all yeah. over. Yeah, I think it yeah, is. I think uh, Dave and I would agree with that. Gazza saying, yep, GG. Colomosa, that's game. Epic Destroyer 9 agrees. Tass, I think, is going to be leaving us. And he's done well to get out of what was a reasonably tough group. But, um, yeah, I think Spencer was too much for him. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Hello. Yeah. You get a goal here, though. Oh, Tass just needs a little bit of luck. The thing is for Spencer, though, he's... It's possible next opponent, Epsilon Rocky or Dr. Ohana, they both play like Tass, but even I think they, they keep a lot more possession than Tass even does, so it's not going to get any easier for him. Might make it a bit harder, yeah. Okay, it's good to know. Here is Gorilla on the ball. He hasn't given up. He's going to keep going until he gets more and more goals. You know, we could see, we've yeah. already got three. I don't know if we're going to see six, but we could see a couple more for sure. Good chance here. Oh, just make it through. Sheriff Woody says, good try, Tass, but uh, I think he agrees that it's not going to be happening for him. I don't think it's even been a good try. <laughs> Guzman1986 says, is this the finals? Yeah, this is the final day. The grand final will take place later today. This is a quarterfinal. It's our first of four quarterfinals. We then, of course, have two semifinals and a final. So seven games in total today uh, before we find out who is the ultimate champion of ultimate team. And this man in the purple kit called Huge Gorilla could be the man to do it. Just 18 years old. Are you at home watching this thinking I could beat these guys? Well, there will be a future events that you can uh, you can put that theory to the test. All and there's lots of online online events happening all the time on Gfinity, isn't there? Yeah. So just Ev go to Gfinity.net, click on the FIFA option, other games as well, and uh, see just how good you are. You know, put yourself up against the best. You could easily come up against either of these guys on the on the platform. He just never takes his foot off the gas, does he? He just he's at he's one hundred percent all of the time. He never, yeah, and I admire he never that. takes I, a I rest. Do, yeah. I have to say I admire it about him. You know, some people would say it's it's, it's slightly naive in the sense <coughs> that he concedes goals, but right now he hasn't conceded a goal against Tass. Yeah, and he, he could just relax now, but he's not going to. That's why he's he's an entertainer. Yeah. I do think he's an entertainer, you know. He doesn't like interviews, we've seen that from him, <coughs> but he does his talking on the pitch. Oh my god. Oh wow. Can you imagine? If that had gone in, would that have been a goal of the season contender, a back heel? No, he's pure luck. <laughs> we talked about this before, it still looks easy on the eye, mate. That, yeah, but that, if he would have scored that, I think like, Tass would have just went absolutely berserk in that booth. I know I would have. All I'd say is, we've I've covered a lot of these events, Dave, and I've yet to see someone back heel it in the back of the net. So, if he did that, for me, it would be in there. I don't think contender. it can even be considered. Like, well, luckily, you don't choose what ones get considered. That one's gone wide, but that was a great chance, that back heel. I'm sorry. It was a great, yeah, it was a great chance, don't get me wrong, but the keeper's just gifted it to him. It was like, nothing Tass could do. 
we were just talking about how uh, obviously he's an entertaining player. Yeah. And that was a great moment to kind of justify that point. You know, he he does play a so I can't really put my finger on what it is, but it's just the energy. It's kind of the intensity of it all, I guess. It's like he just wants to score goals. You know, I read an article. Oh, my word. I did read an article. Wayne Rooney <laughs> has just hit that. He's got a foot like a traction engine. Um, <laughs> no, I read an article about Charlie Austin recently, written by his former teammate, Jermaine Jennings, and he said more than anyone else that he's ever played with, Charlie Austin is obsessed with scoring goals. Yeah. He sleeps goals, he eats goals. You know, obviously strikers, their main currency is goals. But Charlie Austin, more than anyone, he, d he doesn't care if he plays well. He just wants to score as many goals as possible. He talks about other players he played with, like Berbatov and Keane, and how they might score two goals. But if they weren't in the game and they weren't playing well, didn't have a good touch and link-up play, they'd be frustrated afterwards. Yeah. He said, Charlie Austin, he just wants goals. And I think that is huge gorilla summed yeah, up to a definitely. team. Literally. I think his middle name is actually Spencer Goals Ealing, isn't it? <laughs> if not, it should be. You should change it by Deepa. It's a suggestion for you. It's, it's, it's either that or it's Spencer Look Ealing. Yeah, he's going to like that one. You're definitely on yeah. the anti, anti huge gorilla bandwagon, aren't you, Dave? I know. He's Did he beat you once? You're a little bit, a little bit gutted about I think it. He, I think he's one of the best on this, ga on this game. He just frustrates me. He misses his easy chances and then he scores some lucky ones. I think. Obviously, it's, it's very early to tell about FIFA 16, and he wasn't in the scene for FIFA 14. But yeah, he was in the I, scene. I, I he think just... oh, he, was, he was a young guy, though. I think what you've got to say, regardless of next game, last game, we're living in the present, Dave, yeah. in the now, YOLO, and, and Huge Gorilla is the man to be. Oh, definitely. But as I keep Whatever saying, happens in the next game is irrelevant right now. Yeah. We're, this is the FIFA 15, play like a legend championships, and Huge Gorilla is smashing people for fun. Yeah. So yeah, let's just, let's I'd just agree. give him the credit where it's due, please. He's, he's definitely one of, if not the best, like... He, he, Hello? He, oh, oh so that's got to be! Hey. OK, drama yeah. alert, and I'm not talking about Keemstar. I'm talking about FIFA. <laughs> this is an opportunity. Is he going to get... I can't see Tass getting three, though, surely. Surely, can you imagine after all of what I've just said about Griller if Tass comes back now and knocks him out? <laughs> that, but that's the sort of drama yeah. we've seen time and time again here at the Gfinity Arena, live in London. We've seen it so much, haven't we? Yeah, every single season we have, there's at least, uh, like, there's always a shock and there's always an incredible comeback. But even if Tass scores, I can't see him coming back. He just he, he can't create enough for him. Oh, he huh. missed it! So frustrating. Tass gets given what is probably the best chance someone can be given to score a goal. And he misses it. We've seen three penalties in this opening quarter final, and only one's been scored. And uh, Tass, we saw the stats there, he's had one shot. You know, that's not what you need if you need to get three goals. No, as I say, even if he scored that, I couldn't see him coming back because he, he can't create chances without Spencer creating them either. I'm looking forward to seeing Spencer play someone who actually plays the same sort of game style as him because I think Spencer could actually put 10 past him. <laughs> yeah, it could be. It could be interesting. It could be very interesting. I, I, I like, keep mentioning like Spencer's been lucky in this game. He has been lucky, but he's des like he deserves to win like comfortably. And uh, yeah, yeah, he's but just one of those players. Like he, he doesn't like the, as I said. I said like, I spoke to him yesterday. I was like the goals you score like they're not nice, but you miss your, you miss your sitters and then you score a lucky one. So he's kind of like deserved in the end, but it's just not a nice goal to go in if you're the opponent. And he agreed. Yeah. He agreed with me. Like, no, I don't take. Yeah, I, I agree with that entirely. I think, but I think when you start talking about aesthetics. It becomes a different question because, you know, if you saw Match the Day last night, the Big Sam was talking about, you know, people with the dream for any team is to win and win nice. Oh, the most yeah, important thing is he's winning. winning. Yeah, yeah. That's what and I mean. that's what you've got to say. Yeah. And, and listen, you know, you guys might not have been watching the other, um, other events. You know, we've covered them all, Dave and I. And the reason we're perhaps not giving Tass a lot of credit here or, or maybe spending a lot of time talking about Tass is he's kind of been a consistent story with him. Yeah. Sometimes he's got out of the group, sometimes he hasn't. He's never got beyond this point. I don't think he's got to a semi-final. And uh, he just kind of... He just doesn't really live up to the, the, the squad good. that he's got and his past reputation suggests. I think, like you say, it could be a different story in the next game. could be a bit easier for him on head-to-head, -head, but he has to like, open up to it and admit FIFA 15 Ultimate Team has just not been the game for him. No, um... He's just, as I say, he's basically the English version of Rocky. There are always two names that I mentioned to get far in the tournaments, but so far they've struggled. Whereas in this tournament so far, Rocky's actually shown a lot of potential. Yeah, he looks definitely. like he, he's possibly adapted his game, and you know he could have put that right. But obviously Tass hasn't. He's just not 
It's, he, he's playing FIFA 15 like he's still FIFA 14, and as, as you said, you need to move at the times you need to adapt, and Tash just hasn't done that. That's something that does frustrate me, I think, because I think any... It's not like chess, you know? Yeah. If you get good at chess and you spend... Oh, oh. that's another goal. That is game over. It could have been so different if uh, Tash had put that penalty away, but now there is no coming back from this. It is 4-0 on aggregate. Huge gorilla is going to be through to the semi-finals and he's doing it in some style with a nice bit of panache. No goals conceded against Tass. Four goals scored. As he concedes one now. Um, yeah, that's something that's frustrating going back to the point about, about ad adapting your game because it's not like chess. In chess, you can master it over a period of 20, 30 years and then once you've got it down, you can obviously learn new techniques and moves, but it's the same game. The game doesn't change. The only thing that changes is your approach to it. Yeah. However, with, with a game like FIFA, which is released new game every year, you, you have to be able to adapt as such a key component of any long-term successful competitive player. Yeah. And, and it's frustrating because Tass is, has been around the scene for a while. So I'd expect him to be someone that has got the ability to adapt. I wonder if maybe the other games will all kind of work towards his, the way he wants them to be a little bit. And he didn't have to change his game too much. Yeah. And, and now he's had to change his game. He's come undone. And, you know, I've played a bit of FIFA 16. I think you have as well. Yeah. The game is different. Yeah, I think it, it, FIFA 16 will suit us a lot more and not suit Spencer, but to be honest, Spencer is just so good. I can, I, I can't see his like his level dropping that much on FIFA 16. And even if he drops at the start, once he gets used to it, I can. <laughs> that was such a lucky ball if this goes in. You get a goal. Oh, I guess what? I'm glad he's got one. To be fair, I'm glad he's got one. But that pass to get through is so lucky. Feel like what goes both ways. Yeah, yeah, it does. It goes both Sometimes. ways. Sometimes. Well, goes around, comes around, and uh, Tass will be happy to get that goal, but he will be thinking, what if, what if? Because if he scored that penalty, he would have made it 3-1 at the time. I'm not sure why he's making subs. Huge Gerudo, he's still winning by three. He's, he's comfortably going to win this game. See the difference there? Uh, Huge Gerudo's Ronaldo's playing a 9.4, and yeah. Tassi's Ronaldo's playing a 5. Point, sorry, 9.8, I think. Yeah. Tassi's Ronaldo's playing a 5.8. Oh, yeah, 5.8 to 9.4. Same player. It's just been eight played. Yeah. Simple as that. Um, like I said, Tass needed to keep the ball, he needed to frustrate him, and he didn't do that. Like, he was pressed heavily straight away. and um, he, he really got a really lucky penalty, he missed it, and then Tash just didn't really set himself. And as you said, like it takes such a strong mentality to miss a penalty and then like, remain, like, keep your composure and yeah. um, work a chance like he did. And again, I definitely think we've seen more missed and scored penalties this tournament. It must be yeah, about 65, 35% of the so, so many missed penalties, it's just ridiculous. A lot I of think is there a little camera in there where you can aim at the, like, the pads so people can maybe yeah. see like, where they're going? They usually oh. they hide them, but obviously they're in separate booths this time. Yeah, they're in separate booths. They've been separated. Do you, um, if you guys watching at home think that Gorilla's going to win this whole thing, let us know by dropping a comment, Gorilla FTW, Gorilla for the win. Let us know. Um, if you think there's going to be someone else, drop the name of who you think it's going to be. Maybe you're a German supporter and you... You're back in the good Dr. Ahano or, uh, or Marlott. Maybe you're uh, one of the French supporters and you're looking at Brian, you're looking at Rocky. A couple of French guys, Emmy, still in it. Or maybe you like the, uh, some of the other British guys, like Graham, of course. Got a good chance to uh, go forward and get himself a win here. So let us know in the chat what you think. We've got a few supporters of Graham, actually. Uh, Lake THXD says, let's go, Graham. Um, we've got a lot of Gorilla fans, though. a lot of Gorilla FTWs in there. Um, I mean, if a performance like this against a player of Tassi's credentials, then it's no surprise he's being tipped at the top. Oh, interesting. Uh, someone says the French, the French, the Frenches, which isn't a word, but the Frenches are soft. Because they're soft. What do you think it means by that? I think they haven't got the killer instinct. Is that what he's trying to say? I think they've oh, shown no. that they have. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not too sure I can agree with that one. A French, there's been more French winners of this... Uh, this event than English or any other nation. We've had two French winners and oh. one British one. Tass just he had a little bit of space then to do a fake shot inside and have a shot at goal, but he just took too long. Mumilio Zero is saying Marlott for the win. We've got a German fan there. And uh, Einfash Gamer is saying Dr. Ahano. With a K? Because let's not forget, he doesn't care if he's with a K. Well, he's just gone with the old DR option. Nah, well, so that'll be it. It's simple, yeah. Nah, I'll, I'll let that one slide. Someone also says Dumbia for president. I'm not sure if mm. he's running, is he? Is he? He may be. 
the guy that said the French is the soft has further kind of uh, clarified his point. He said, yeah, they don't have the English football mentality. I don't think you want the English football mentality. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, we've watched England play football recently, but we're not good. Um, so, yeah, I think, that, I think there's no denying the French oh, are leading the good way. Ball. Oh, what a touch he's got there. He got away with that. Patrick Vieira, he's actually shaking his head. He's not happy with the way that goal's gone in. Because of that touch, I think, from Vieira. But he's got the goal, so who's to complain? That's now 5-1. Now he, I told you he scores goals, Dave. He yeah. just scores goals. Yeah, there's no denying that the French, uh, as, as a scene, as a kind of collective. Oh, what is Tassi's defender doing there? Did you see what just happened? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Another woodwork hit. Um, yeah, there's no denying the French kind of scene is more dominant in terms of numbers. I'd say they've got more high quality players than any other country. France. Yeah. Uh, Would you disagree? It, it, it's hard to say because in the UK we've got so many like unknown entities and yeah. obviously France is uh, probably going to be the same as well but uh, I'm just looking I mean I haven't done that oh, it would be good to get some stats on it because obviously we know there's been an English winner and two French winners but in terms of like finalists and semi-finalists you know we've had Ty as a losing finalist yeah uh, who have been, who've been our other losing finalist who lost to Emmy uh, Poacher yeah Poacher another English finalist yeah and uh, who did Spencer beat in the final season one uh, I don't remember that far back anymore was oh, it? yeah, uh, he was a Spanish player. Oh, yeah, of yeah. course, Spanish player. So we've had a few different nations involved. Um, but interestingly, no one other than an Englishman or a Frenchman has won this tournament yet. But today, that could change, because later on today, we've got two German competitors coming up. It would be nice to see uh, another nationality win. It, it would show that it is a, you know, it is a, it's, it's a... Uh, it's an event that is spans different countries. Yeah. And it's a game that we know that FIFA is one of the most popular games in the world. Um, there's people of high qualities all over the place. Yeah. We've seen Polish players, we've seen Danish players. I mean, yeah. Spanish, I, I, yeah. Should, I should be patriotic and want one of the English players to win, but I think I'm going to be like one of those armchair fans that have got like an eighth Italian in them or something. And when Italy do well, like the international okay. side, they claim to be full Italian. I've got like some German in me somewhere, so I might jump on the bandwagon and. Well, it yeah. is game over there, and a lot of people will be jumping on the huge gorilla bandwagon, that's for sure, because he is sailing through, not the bandwagon sail, of course, <laughs> but he is sailing through to the semi-finals. He's yeah. our first semi-finalist. Whatever happens now, huge gorilla is taking home some cash, as well as, well, it would be actually be a check. It would be a big check, but um, he'd be taking home that, uh, regardless of where he finishes now, because semi all semi-finalists win something, as well as FIFA points, legends, all sorts of amazing prizes. So. He's got a smile on his face, he's happy, and I don't blame him. He's just put five yeah. past Dignitas, who's no mug. Yeah, he created so many chances. Um, and I said he, he scored a few lucky goals, but with the chances he, he created, he absolutely destroyed Tass, and he deserved to win that, possibly by even more goals than what he actually scored. Let's take a moment to, uh, to applaud Tass on his achievements here. He's been a regular competitor across the uh, Play Like a Legend events. He's always qualified, he's always got here. Yeah. But, um, he wasn't able to secure a win uh, at any no. of those events. And he'll, he'll be looking to change that maybe next year. Uh, maybe if the game suits him a little yeah. bit more. Uh, yeah. Ultimately, though, for me, final now in his coffin was, was his kind of refusal to adapt his style to yeah. a game that has changed well, I, in a way he didn't it, like. I don't necessarily think it's a refusal, but he's played the same way now since about well, was like FIFA 12. So like, if you play the same way for so long, it's just it's near impossible to adapt at times. So uh, I just... <laughs> adapt or die, Dave. Yeah, well, adapt it, or die. It, it, you, you can you can go in with two uh, like two ideas. You can either think, right, I'm going to adapt my game and uh, adapt my game to the st uh, adapt my style to the game, or you can think, right, I'm just going to try and work at my style and try and make my style work on the game. And I think he went for the second one, which obviously didn't work. Yeah, I think I think if you're talking about real football, which has unlimited variables and ways you can do it. I think there's definitely an argument to say, look, make a mentality, have a philosophy. We've seen lots of clubs do it over the years yeah. and apply it and make it work for you. I've got no problem with that. I think with games, there's a difference. There, yeah. uh, it's an engine, there's a match engine. There is you know, things that have been put in the game by the creators of it that allow a certain style of play to come up trumps. Like we've seen crosses in yeah. other games. Like we've seen you know, possession football games mixed with a pace-based game now. You know, FIFA 16 will have a certain way of playing that will suit it best. And for me, if it doesn't work along with the way that Tass likes to play, he's going to have a problem. Yeah, well, um, a lot of people always try and um, like 
make their style work on a different game. I'm, I guarantee you now Spencer will try and make his style work on FIFA 16. He won't try and adapt. He'll just try and make his style work because that's what he's so good at. And if you have so much success with a style, you never really want to just throw it out the window. You always want to try and make it work. And uh, I do agree with what you're saying. You do need to you do need to change it and you do need to adapt. But unfortunately for Tass, he just hasn't done that well enough on FIFA 15. Yeah, well, Tass, it will be leaving us, but Spencer has gone through, and we're going to go over to uh, Chris now, who's going to be chatting to Huge Gorilla about that victory. Thank you very much, guys. So, Spencer, I think the first question I've got to ask you is, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you hate interviews? 10. You sure? Yeah. Not like an 11? I know, you, I know the scale's up to a 10, but it seems like you really don't like them that much. Uh, I'm not a fan of them, so hopefully uh, get it over quickly. Well, I'm going to try and make this go on for as long as I possibly can. But obviously, we're going to talk about the game. I mean, during that, it was a couple controversial moments in it. Would you say that the first penalty was a penalty, or would you say it's a soft one? My penalty or his? Your penalty. I don't even remember it, to be honest. But, um, yeah, I don't remember. I don't think his was a penalty. I think he shot, and his player's foot got caught in my player's leg. But I don't remember my uh, first penalty. Overall in the game, how did you think you performed? Did you think you played well? Um, I think that's one of my better performances uh, of the weekend, but I was a bit annoyed with myself hitting the woodwork about six or seven times. I just got to try and take my chances, and if I can do that, hopefully I can go to the final. But Rocky and Dreyana are playing next, so I have to watch that and see what happens. I was going to say, there was quite a few unlucky chances. There were times where you looked really in control. You got, I would say, two penalties that, in my opinion, were quite soft. I don't know how you felt about that. They were they were fortunate, and they really kind of set the tone for the game. But there were also a number of opportunities, as you said, you hit the post and the bar. Did they kind of get in your head, head at any point? Were you a little bit nervous, maybe thinking the game wasn't on your side? Um, when I missed that first penalty, um, that was like my fourth penalty I've missed in the row or something like that. I was I thought that was it, game over, it's, the look's going to change, but um, yeah, I just dug in and got that second goal and I thought I was comfortable after that. Where would you say the mistakes were made by Tass today? I mean, he really didn't come out of full blazing. There's been a lot of criticism about him that, although he's a fantastic player in his own right and plays his own game, that when he is behind it, he really does struggle to try and grind out a victory and adapt his play style to someone like Cures. And I know that in previous times you haven't been a big fan of playing Tass because he does have a very frustrating play style to the way that you play. Uh, it is frustrating. Uh, he tries to keep possession. Uh, I don't think this FIFA is made for possession, but there is some players that can perfect it. But Tass is a good player now. He'll be back next FIFA, I think, at his best. So obviously, with your play style, playing very aggressive, I think now you've scored, off the top of my head, you have scored about 17 goals in three games now. Are you looking to try and continue that? It seems like you've gone for an all-out approach and scoring as many goals as you possibly can. Like I said before, that's the way I play. I aim to get goals and don't really concentrate on defending. I also try my best, but at the end of the day, the more goals you're going to win, so that's my aim. Cool, and obviously we've got Rocky and Dr. Ahana coming up, one of those guys you'll be playing. So who would you like to play the most and who do you think is going to win in that matchup? Um, they're both good players. Uh, I haven't really seen much of them, but I think they both play the same kind of style, which is possession. So uh, both of them will be good, so anyone. can't really say which one. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. So there you have it. Tass and Ty both eliminated from the tournament. It's unfortunate to see those two Dignitas players go home. But obviously being such great teammates and knowing each other for such a long time, we managed to catch up with them and just find out how much they know about each other. Uh, Aston Villa. Favourite FIFA game? Uh, I wish that was the worst FIFA game. Uh, favourite FIFA game I'd go with... 09? Yeah, uh, 15. FIFA 15. <laughs> uh, I haven't been around him when he's had ice cream, so uh, it's going to have to be a guess. I'll go with vanilla. Favourite FIFA moment? Oh man, I'll go with one of the most recent ones when he uh, came back in semi-final against Huge Gorilla 2-0 down. That was pretty cool, I think he might say that. Aston Villa. That's There's one. <laughs> oh, this one was That's a tough one. Uh, if I had to pick the obvious choice, I'd probably say FIFA 14. <laughs> this game, FIFA 15. Think of something obvious. Chocolate. <laughs> vanilla. vanilla. Oh. I knew it was going to be chocolate or vanilla. If I get this right, this is good. 
He'll see why I said what I said as well. Winning an FIWC UK. <laughs> What I went that? for the most recent one, when you, in the semi-final, the gorilla come Oh back. yeah, that was good as well. I should have went with that, that was mm. bad by me. Somehow.